The African Union has a new chairperson. It's Chad's former Prime Minister, Musa Faki Mahamat. The AU summit was held virtually at the weekend, and the COVID-19 pandemic dominated the agenda. For more, I'm joined now by Edwin Ikuria, the Executive Director for Africa of the One campaign. Very good morning to you. Uh, we have a problem with this chairperson. I mean, he's been accused of, and I quote here, a culture of sexual harassment, bribery, corruption, and bullying within the commission. How come he's got his job back? Uh, but the, the thing is that I'm sure the AU has its processes of verifying those accusations. Um, we are not expected to comment one we don't have official sources. So if there are complaints, I'm sure the AU processes will have uh, taken its course. Uh, the, the question here really has been the level of popularity dependent on, the, on his relationship with the staff and general member states. And I, I think uh, for them to give him another opportunity, he must have really uh, he must have done what he's supposed to do. Uh, I'm just certain that comments on on his personality and on and um, accusations that have not been investigated, you know, it's really uh, not, not the best comments to make, especially um, on, on in the media. Okay, well, I mean, it's clearly if it's out there, it's something that's got to be raised. Uh, what sort of relationship do you think he's going to have with DRC, uh, a, a country that's not doing too well at the moment, considering all the problems there at home? I mean, will he be able to focus? on the needs of the African Union? Of course. I, I think, so there, there are always problems on the African continent. In fact, the country where the AU uh, is situated, Ethiopia, is currently immersed in a serious conflict. So there are always mm -hmm. challenges. The question here will be whether he will have the, um, the, the, the cooperation that he needs and requires from member states to deliver. So again, the African Union Commission, as much as it is an institution of uh, you know, to coordinate and create and set norms for the African Union, uh, decisions are mainly driven by member states. And I think that is where the challenge has always been. So it's not really within his power to do certain things in certain countries, but he can make the bureaucracy work, work to ensure that decisions of heads of states are, are, are actually implemented. So that's where we see that, um, you know, given another mandate, it will be easier for him to basically focus on what processes internally would help to realize the mandates of the, of the member states. And I think that's where the challenge is. Okay, and during the summit, I know that the coronavirus obviously dominated. It's growing at an alarming rate through Africa. How is that going to be tackled, especially considering that the continent's also going through its worst recession in 25 years? So again, that is the biggest challenge. One of the things we've seen is that the pandemic has revealed the st structural inequities that, you know, that have been plaguing the whole world. It's not just uh, uh, in, in Africa. So when wild countries are able to respond because they had real fiscal space to do that, I mean, developed countries, African countries couldn't, they don't have the space, they couldn't do anything, they couldn't do as much as they should have. The central banks have intervened and all kinds of programs and processes and policy responses have happened. In fact, I would say Africa has done the best it can. Right now, it's a time to get the cooperation of the world. And that is why the issue of vaccine access is the biggest challenge right now. Why, whereas the rest of the world are currently rolling out vaccines, Africa is still just getting the first set of doses and rollout has not begun. And the longer Africa stays with this problem, if Africa doesn't put out the fires of the, um, of the vaccines or of the pandemic right now or the virus right now on the continent, the global economy will continue to slow down. And that is why attention needs to be paid to how we get rid of, of the virus from the continent as it is being taken care of in other parts of the world. So that is why it will continue to dominate agenda until this virus is out of the continent. And should we here in Africa have better access to loans? Cyril Ramaphosa has called for that. That is, a, that is actually the, one of the most important uh, uh, components in terms of what you call development finance. Mm -hmm. Africa cannot come out of, its recession, of this recession if, it doesn't have, if the African leaders don't have access to liquidity to be able to invest in the right sector that, are really, that will spur growth. So the, 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 the biggest uh, uh, driver of, of Africa's debt right now is the unsustainable level of, of interest rates. African, African leaders or African countries get into the financial market at rates that are far way above that, that continue to entrench them in debt. So when uh, uh, the President Cyril was talking about concessional loans, he's basically recognizing that we cannot uh, 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 come out of this uh, 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 pandemic, the economic shocks from this pandemic, unless there is access to liquidity, unless critical investments are made. And those critical investments will not be made if they don't, if, if Africa doesn't have access to, to, to the financial markets, but not at the current rate. And that is why multilateral development bank 
development financial institutions that were created for that purpose should begin to function in that purpose right now by making sure that we have access to these resources at good rates that will enable us, you know, make this right investment and recover. But right now, also, another another uh, call is being made for, for the special drawing rights of the IMF to be allocated. In 2008, 2009, during the uh, financial crisis, um, there, there was a real, there was allocation of, of, of um, SDRs. So we are wondering why even at this point in time when uh, um, the whole world is affected, you know, why haven't there been that release or that new issuance? But again, it has shown a lack of global leadership, especially with the U.S. Uh, 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 government not really playing its leadership role to drive the shareholders of the IMF to issue these SDRs. But it's not just to issue the SDR, it's also how find the mechanism of transferring that to poor or, or developing countries so that they can actually make this investment without costing taxpayers money. That's okay. what we're calling for, and that's what President Syria has called for, and we hope that it will really work this time.